Essential Personal Finance Tips for Young Adults So before we get started, make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to my channel. Getting your financial footing can be a challenge when you're young, especially if you have student loan payments or a new mortgage make you feel penniless. However, it's never too early to start financial planning. By creating a budget, improving your financial literacy, and understanding investments. Budgeting Budgeting is one of the simplest ways to stay in control of your money, but it's also one of the most effective. The concept is straightforward. It involves working out what you've got coming in and what's going out and making sure that you can afford all your commitments. It also helps you pinpoint where you might be wasting money, where you could save money, and plays an important role in planning for the future. Be honest when writing down what you actually spend. This will allow you to work out where you can make some savings, perhaps by canceling unused subscriptions or negotiating a cheaper mobile or broadband contract. Try to include some savings goals if you can. This can be tough, especially if you start your working life on a low income. So making sure you can cover your outgoings should be your priority before committing to a savings goal. If you are able to put some of your disposable income towards savings, many people subscribe to the 50-30-20 approach. This sees 50% of your monthly income spent on bills, groceries, and other essentials, 30% used for luxuries and treats, and the rest is put into a savings account. The good thing about the percentage strategy is that as your earnings increase, so should the amount you save. Track your spending. This is something that is closely linked to budgeting. Once you've set yourself a budget, try to keep an eye on where you're spending your money. If you veer from your budget every once in a while, don't beat yourself up about it. It's easily done. But it's important not to lose all of your financial discipline. You might find it helpful to use an app or a bank account that allows you to keep track of your spending. With each transaction, put into a particular category. You can then quickly and easily see where your money is being spent and where you might be able to make some savings. One easy way to save on your monthly outgoings is to look for cheaper tariffs on websites like Money Saving Expert. You may find that you can switch to a less expensive broadband contract or get a better deal on your TV subscription. Prioritize your debts. Saving is an important part of managing your finances, but having said that sometimes it is more beneficial to use your spare cash to clear any debts. As generally, the interest you pay for your borrowing will almost certainly be more than the interest you'll receive from any savings. You should be keeping up with your minimum monthly repayments. But if you can afford overpayments, and if the lender allows you to do so, consider making them. If you have several debts, it is best to prioritize paying off the most expensive first. For example, credit card debt is often more expensive than a bank loan, so it would make sense to pay off the credit card first. Use credit cards wisely. If you get a good introductory purchase offer, you can spread the cost of an expensive purchase over a long period, perhaps as much as three years, although make sure you honor your minimum monthly repayments. Credit cards also provide you with additional purchase protection on any item or service you buy with a card that costs £100 or more. Many also give you cash back and other helpful extras, but it's important to use them carefully. It's crucial that you understand that a credit card is buy now, pay tomorrow, and not buy now, pay never. Make sure you don't grow your credit card balance to the extent that you can't afford your monthly repayments. And remember that if you haven't cleared your balance by the end of any introductory period, you'll be stung with high interest charges. Monitor your credit score. Your credit score will play an important part in the amount lenders will allow you to borrow for things like a mortgage or finance for a new car. If you have a low credit score, potential lenders might not want to do business with you, or they'll charge you more for doing so. As a young adult, it's common to have a low credit score as you haven't got a borrowing history that lenders can use as a way to predict your future behavior. The easiest way to get a good credit score is to meet your repayment obligations. It's also useful to have other financial contracts, like a monthly phone contract, which you keep up with the repayments for, as this signals to a lender that you're reliable. Become financially literate. Establishing financial literacy early on in our adult lives can help to foster a healthy relationship with money and a positive financial well-being. One of the key things anyone should understand is how interest works. Compound interest can work to your advantage when you're saving, 
Put simply, when you earn interest on your money and you add that interest to your balance, the following year you'll be earning interest on the original lump sum and the interest you've already earned. This might not seem like a lot in the short term, but it can build up significantly. On the other hand, don't assume that a low interest rate means borrowing is cheap. While it might mean you don't have to pay very much back on a monthly basis, a long-term loan spread over many years could be expensive. Plan for the future. If you're employed, you'll probably be automatically enrolled on a pension scheme, and this means your employer will also make monthly payments into your pension pot. The government also tops up your contributions through a tax break, making a pension a very tax-efficient way to save for retirement. It's important to start paying into a pension as early as possible. If you leave it late to join a pension scheme, you'll end up having to pay much greater contributions in order to achieve the same benefits. Getting into the habit of saving for later life is a good one to start early. As your working life progresses, you can look at other savings vehicles, like ISAs and investment options. This is not a fully comprehensive guide, but following these tips is a good starting point to managing your finances as you navigate the challenges of adult life. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. Before you go, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.